today we're going to learn about something called vector masks. We're going to do a very, very simple demonstration of using vector masks to merge two photographs in a single canvas. I'm going to start by creating a new file. This time I'm going to set my file up to 1000 pixels by 1000 pixels. Make sure you set up your units first and then type in the number. You really need to pay attention. You do not want to make something that is 1000 inches. I'm going to call this file Vector Masks Intro and I'll click Create. We have two JPEGs with our exercise files, so what I'll do is I'll place both of them here. I'll navigate up to File, select Place Linked, I'll find the files, and I'll place my JPEG for the Earth. and then I'll place my JPEG for the moon. Okay. I'm just pressing return to exit out of the transform boxes. But you'll see that after placing the two images, each image has its own layer. And what I'm going to be doing, so I'll zoom in here, and I'm going to be creating a path that is the same size as this moon. So keeping that moon layer selected, I'm going to now bring my paths window forward by clicking on the tab. I'll press P to access my pen tool, and I'm going to create an ellipse the same way we did in the introductory pin tool demonstration. I'll start at the top of the moon. I'm seeing a star next to my pin tool, meaning I'm starting a path. And I'm going to work clockwise again. So I'm going to direct the path to go to the right. And then I'm going to move to the right side of the moon, a little bit into the black space and I'm going to eyeball the center before holding my mouse down and directing the path downward. And I'm getting that path to just hug the edge of the shape of the moon. I'll now move to the bottom of the moon, hold my mouse down and drag to the left. So I'm telling that path now to move to the left. So we started at the top, we went to the right. On the right side, we drag down. On the bottom, we drag to the left. We'll navigate onto the far left side of the moon, hold our mouse down and drag upwards. Again, just don't release your mouse until you're happy with where that blue path is. But remember that you can edit this at the end with the direct selection tool release my mouse, and I'll go back to the first point where I'll see the circle next to my cursor telling me that I'm closing my path. I'm going to hold my mouse down, drag straight to the right before releasing my mouse. I can see my work path here in my path window, and I'm noticing some problems with the shape of my path, so I'll access my direct selection tool a or Shift A will allow you to access that white arrow. And to edit my path, I have to click on an anchor point or on a side. If you want to deselect everything and start by clicking on a quadrant, you can do that too. So this quadrant here, the upper left quadrant for me, is a little bit off. So I'll just deselect my moon, reselect that quadrant. It'll give me both handlebars that are defining it. And I'm just going to shorten this handlebar, change the angle a little bit, 
and then I'll drag this handlebar at a slight angle as well. When I change the angle of the handlebars, it changes the other side of the anchor as well. So I'll have to shift the second handlebar a little bit so that it better reflects the shape of the moon. And I'll kind of move around the ellipse this way. Now, a little trick for creating vector masks when you're trying to cut out something from a photograph is keep the path tiny bit smaller than the contrasting edge of the object. That way when you do cut this object out, you don't get little black lines around it. So I'm just going to keep my path barely on the inside of the shape of this moon. And I think this looks pretty good. Okay. Okay. Once we're happy with this path, what I want you to do is, uh, with that direct selection tool, click outside of the path so that the full path is deselected on your canvas. But make sure that this work path is selected in your paths window. What we're going to do now is double check which layer is selected and I want you to make sure that the moon, the space moon layer is selected before navigating down to the bottom of your layers window and you're going to click two times on the add layer mask icon. I'm going to click one time and I'll get that white thumbnail we're familiar with for our regular layer mask. That's the layer mask that is pixel based. We can paint with it, we can, I'll eventually show you how to copy and paste pixels into it. But if I click on this add layer, add, I'm sorry, add mask again, um, I'm going to add something called a vector mask. So I'll click on that icon one more time. And then I'll hide this earth image for a second. And when I click on that second mask, what I now have is another thumbnail and that thumbnail looks just like the work path that we had in our paths window. And this path is serving as a mask for the space moon layer. Okay. You can see because the moon has some shadow on the side, I kept some of the black space around it. But if you're not satisfied with that, what you can do is make sure that that vector mask is still selected and then using this direct selection tool or direct um, yeah direct selection tool um, click at the bottom here and you can make minor adjustments to the location of your anchor points so if you have a little too much black showing I'm just going to take this anchor point click on it one time and nudge it using my up down left right arrows but this looks really really good okay Vector masks are masks created from shapes and paths are actually shapes. They're geometric shapes. They're closed in order to serve as a mask, but paths can also be open. Um, in Photoshop, you don't use open paths very often, but in a future demo, I will show you how to use an open path to create strokes or illustrate something and add graphics. Okay, so I'm going to take this moon and I'm actually going to scale it down just a little bit. I'm going to hit Command T and again, Command T will apply to whatever layer is selected. And I'll just scale this down a little bit before recentering it. When you're happy with the scale, press Return. Okay. And what we're going to do now is we're going to resize our Earth image. So I'm going to reveal it. I hit it for a second so you guys could see the moon. But I'll reveal it again using the eyeball on the left side of the layer. And I'm going to resize the Earth to fit the size of the moon. So I'm going to hit Command T. 
And again, because I have Adobe 19, I don't have to hold Shift, but if you have an earlier version, you are going to have to hold Shift while dragging a corner to scale this down. So I'm going to scale it down to where it's just about the size of the moon, and it's pretty easy to do this. You just kind of look at the edges here. Just about the size of the moon. It's pretty darn close. And again, you can use your, when you get real close, you can use your up, down, left, right arrows to nudge it. Okay. And press return to set that transformation. Make sure that you're happy with where the earth layer is because we don't want to move it later. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to cut the earth layer or mask the earth layer into the same circle shape that we are using on our moon. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this mask, this vector mask here and from Space Moon into my earth layer. Okay. To copy that vector mask, all you have to do is hold Option or Alt drag that thumbnail down to the layer you want to place it onto. Release your mouse before releasing your shortcut key. So now we have the moon layer and the earth layer masked into the same shaped path. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to have to reveal some of the earth layer. And the only way to do that is to hide some of that space moon layer. So I'm going to select the white thumbnail here in my space moon layer. And then I'm going to use my gradient tool to create a mask. The gradient tool can be found on the left side of your double column toolbar. G is your shortcut key. And by default gradients will most likely be addressing the colors that you have here in your foreground background. If you want to reset to black and white, remember you have your miniature swatches in the lower left below your main swatches. Gradients, pull from foreground background in the default setting here. If you'd like to see other gradients that are already in your system, click um, just next to this gradient thumbnail and you'll get a flyout menu that has other gradients that are saved. Now the very first swatch here in this pop-out menu is going to be foreground background and my foreground background is white and black so that's what I'm seeing a gradient that fades from white to black. Know that gradients can be different shapes. Linear means it just follows a single line as it changes. Radial means it radiates from center we have angular gradients, reflected gradients, and diamond gradients. I just want to make sure that you have selected the linear gradient. And then for good measure, make sure that your mode is normal and your opacity is 100%. Because the gradient for me, I have a foreground of white, a background of black, it's going to be white where I start drawing my gradient and the gradient's going to be black where I stop drawing it. So gradients are drawn, linear gradients are drawn over a line. Okay, so what I'll do is I'm just going to start a little bit left of center with my cursor. I'll hold my mouse down and I'm going to drag to the right. If I want it to be perfectly horizontal, I'll hold shift and drag just to the right of center, release my mouse, and I'll see that I've drawn a gradient that's white on the left side and black on the right side. All the gray in between is transparency that's changing over that line that you just drew. If your gradient looks funny, don't worry, you can redraw it. So just hold shift while you draw left to right, if you do right to left, it's going to flip top to bottom. 
but shift is going to give you a perfectly horizontal gradient. So what's happening here is we actually have two masks working for us. We have a regular layer mask and that's where our gradient is living and that's why we're getting to fade some of our pixels here. Okay, so the pixel-based normal layer mask allows us to fade things. But if I look at the other mask that's working, it's our vector mask, and that's built with a path. And paths are shapes, meaning they don't fade. There are no, there isn't a tonal dimension to vector masks. Okay, there are edges, there's inside and outside, but there isn't um, a transparency. So transparency is something, or um, yeah, controlling transparency with grays and shades of gray, that's for your normal mask. Controlling edges and shapes, that's for your vector mask. So with the two together, you can add really complicated masks to an image. Okay, now that we have this all done, I'm going to take my background layer and select it. Then I'll go up to my edit menu, select fill. And I'm just going to fill this with a color. So when I click on this drop down menu for contents, I'm going to select color. I'll navigate to my blue. I'm going to select a really, really, really dark blue. I'll say OK, and that will fill it in so that it looks like a perfectly seamless composite of the moon and earth. Remember, if you want to make changes to anything, if you want to make adjustments, you can always select the layer you want to adjust, apply an adjustment, and if you only want to impact that singular layer, click on the clipping mask icon which is at the bottom of your properties for that adjustment. It looks like a white square with an arrow coming out. And that will allow you to simply adjust that singular layer. So if I wanted my moon to be a little higher contrast because the earth image has a lot of contrast, I can apply a brightness contrast adjustment. When I'm happy with that, I can then save my image. Hopefully this gives you a nice introduction to vector masks. We'll be using them more. Um, they're really fantastic, especially um, with a regular layer mask. It makes it really powerful combination as far as being able to control everything about compositing images. Let's save this as a JPEG and Hopefully you enjoyed this and you can submit just a regular JPEG. Remember last name, first name, week, exercise, and save.